So the Cruiserweight tournament kicked off um, with uh, Alexander Usyk versus Marco Huck. And, uh, you know, look, going into this fight, I already felt that Usyk is the heavy favorite to beat Huck. Uh, Huck, you know, his past, I think he's seen his better days in boxing and, uh, and Usyk, who's on the rise, uh, looked like to be the heavy favorite uh, to win this fight. And I, and I believe he's the favorite to win this tournament. Um, I was impressed with the style and the simple way that Usyk beat Marco Huck, right? Like, looking at it now, it makes perfect sense. Um, first of all, he came in an incredible shape. I like to see Usyk like that in that kind of shape. You know, it's a... It, to me, it's an impressive sight to watch a six foot three man fight at that you know at that pace and and that athletic ability that he has the the footwork especially right the footwork was impressive it's always been impressive in all his fights. One of the things that I noticed uh, about Usyk, um, I thought his method was pretty simple, and that was uh, to stay you know fighting from the southpaw stance to stay on Huck's uh, left-hand side, right, by his, uh, his lead left, where he was able to do the most damage. Um, he was able to land beautiful jabs when he wanted to. I thought the straight left to the body whenever he, whenever he decided to go to the body was very effective. I thought that uh, the way, that was the way for him to break him down, get him frustrated and break him down uh, pretty much, you know, he won just about every round, in my opinion. Um, and until he scored the, uh, the stoppage in the 10th round. Um, an impressive victory in the sense that, uh, it, you know, he looked pretty phenomenal in beating Huck, right? Um, does this mean that he's, because he beat Huck the way he did, that that means he's going to win the tournament? I don't think so. Uh, but it's a way to start it, you know, it's the way to start the uh, tournament off. It's the way to start off his quest to win the tournament, which I do think he is the favorite to win uh, this tournament. Um, it'll be interesting to see who he matches up against uh, after this fight, who, who he's going to fight next. I still believe that he is the favorite. Um, it's either him or Murad Gusayev. I think one of those guys, uh, in my opinion, will win. Uh, I think Breedis, um third. Most people will probably think he's the favorite or at least second to so I, I think it's Kasayev. But uh, we'll see how that plays out. Um, I think that um, this is, a, you know, obviously an impressive win. Can he follow up on, uh, with this with another great victory against whoever he matches up against? I definitely think he has the ability to... to um, to beat a lot of these guys that are in that tournament in impressive fashion. Um, will he beat them and get the outcome that he did with Huck? Uh, maybe the competition is a little tougher, so the answer probably is no. He's a combination guy. He can outbox you and stop you late. Um, I think his power is decent. A lot of it, to me, is that he's the kind of fighter that... Um, you know, he doesn't sit on a lot of his punches, basically like that. I think when he does sit on his punches, there's a lot of, it, it's a different outcome. But it was a great win for him. So, Rung Bisai scores a impressive one-punch knockout. I believe that was his right, yeah, that was his right hand. I know he fights from the softball stance, but it was a, a, a you know, a crushing right hand. One punch knocks out, uh, knocks out uh, Roman Gonzalez and... Uh, you know, this happens in boxing. You know, when you fight enough, enough top competition and you keep moving up in weight, eventually, you know, you get, you, you'll get beat, you know, and that's exactly what happened here. Um, this guy saw Rung Visai, who I really don't know much about. Uh, obviously, I started to know a little bit about him as he was uh, getting fights with uh, guys like Quadros and... Um, and uh, Roman Gonzalez, 
Um, you know, he's this is a guy who obviously is a dangerous fighter, right? I mean, this is a dangerous boxer, always ready for the you know for tough competition, always ready for his moment, and um, he capitalized on it. I thought that uh, you know Roman Gonzalez at this point of his career has reached his max. Um, you know, I think he went up what four weight classes. Um, and, you know, and that when you're that small in weight, um, you know, the weight classes is like four weight classes equals to what 12 to 15 pounds the most. So, but he reached his max. Roman Gonzalez reached his max, um, and he, you know, he got stopped by a guy who's, you know, who's gamed and a very good fighter himself, and uh, was ready for these big opportunities. And was able to capitalize on maybe Roman Gonzalez just max, you know, tapping out, maxing out at, at this point of his career. Um, so the, you know, would it would it be uh, would it be impressive if a guy like um, Ron Visai turns out to be, you know, the guy that's he obviously is the guy that stopped Roman Gonzalez, and he goes on to go on a great run. You know, it it wouldn't be shocking. Um, but I think that he's just the the perfect fighter at the right time. And uh, unfortunately for Roman Gonzalez, he just happened to meet, you know, he just happened to meet his match, a guy that uh, was a little too much for him at this point of his career.